Hello everyone, I'm Abhishek from Team Robocart and welcome to the first session on this robotics and electronics. So we will start with the basic of robotics first. To understand this better, let's start with the basic parts of a robot. There are sensors, controller, actuator, chassis and power supply. Now to understand them better, uh, I am comparing a human body with a machine so that we can understand it better. The first part, controllers. Now as we have a brain inside our body, the main function of brain to give commands to all other parts. Similarly, we will use controller in robots or in smart machines to control the machine for me. Next we have sensors. As we have our eyes, ears, nose, these parts are providing information to my brain. Similarly, sensors will collect information from surrounding like what is happening in my surrounding and they will provide this information to my brain to my controller next parts are actuators we need some actually working parts in our body like our hands are actually performing a task our legs are actually walking my mouth is actually speaking similarly in machines we need some actually working parts we have motors, LEDs, buzzers, these things actually perform the task and they are called as actuators. Next we have a chassis. Now chassis is the basic body of any machine. The way I have a skeleton inside my body, it is providing me a basic support. We have chassis, the basic body in a machine. Then we need a power supply. Now I have to consume some food for performing all these activities. Similarly, machines, robots need power. So we can use electric current, we can use batteries, we can manually give power, but they need some kind of power supply. These were the five basic parts of a machine, controller, sensor, actuator, chassis and power supply. Now in this power supply, let's understand about voltage, current and resistance. To understand this, I am giving you a small example of this water tank. Uh, suppose there are two tanks A and B. Now this tank is on ground and let's say this tank is on 9 feet from the ground. So there is a height difference between two tanks. Similarly, when a point is on higher potential and the second point is on lower potential, there is a potential difference between two points. Difference of charge, difference of energy, potential difference. Because of this height difference, the water is flowing from this upper tank to lower tank. Similarly, because of potential difference, current will flow from higher potential to lower potential. And suppose there are some stones in this pipe, what will happen? The water will still flow, but the force of water will get reduced. Similarly, if there is resistance in circuit, the value of current will get reduced. Now let's see all these things in a simulator. For that, we are using a website called as Thinkercat. Open a new tab on your Google Chrome and search for Tinkercad. Tinkercad.com This is the home page of Tinkercad. Now you have to click on join now to create your own account. Click on educator start here. Then I agree. Continue with Google. Sign in with Google. Then you have to select your own Google account. Then some basic questions like display name. And you will be able to see your name over here, Rane Abhishek. In your screen, you will be able to see your name. Now we are going to build your own circuit. We are going to build our own circuit. You can create your own design, circuits and code blocks. We will use circuits. So click on circuits and let's start with a new circuit. Okay, now let's start with the circuit. First, I am taking a breadboard. We use breadboard to avoid the soldering. We can easily connect whatever we want on it. And we can try new circuits without soldering it. Let's connect the battery. I am connecting a 9 volt battery. 
positive point with this positive and negative point is negative for positive i am using a red color wire and for negative i am using a black color wire now the advantage of breadboard is this lines are internally connected so now over here and here i can use this negative supply on this entire line and i can use this positive supply on this entire horizontal line similarly these lines over here they are vertically connected so if i connect anything over here i can trigger this using this entire line i am connecting a led LED stands for light emitting diode and diodes allows the flow of current only in one direction they have polarity which means anode is positive and cathode is negative so we have to connect this anode with the positive point and the cathode with the negative point use proper color code for negative we use black color wire and for positive we use a red color wire now if i click on start simulation i can see the simulation of the circuit let's see the led is glowing but the led is getting damaged see the current through the led is 915 milliampere while the absolute maximum is 20 milliampere so to reduce the value of current we can use resistors to limit the value of current we can use resistors Let's see how we can use the resistors. I am connecting it over here on this positive side. This anode is connected with the resistance, and the second point of my resistor is connected with the positive supply. Red color wire. Now let's see. Now the LED is glowing without any damage. Now to control this LED, we can use button. Let's see. Let's see how this push button actually works. Okay. Now I am taking a button to turn the circuit on. We have to connect these two diagonals, these ones or these ones. We have to connect them, and when we press the button, the circuit will get on. Let's see. I am connecting this. on this point and this point will be positive see i am using the diagonals this one and this one current is coming from positive from this point over here when i press the button it will go over here and then resistance and then the led and the circuit will get complete let's see the simulation this is how you can control this led by pressing the button this was the basics of tinker cad now let's start with some programming part i am removing everything and for programming we need a controller and we are using a arduino uno as a controller over here so i am dragging a arduino over here on my screen now on this arduino we have multiple pins power pin analog pin and digital pin let's understand the working first the power pins are used for giving and taking output from arduino 5 volt and 3.3 volt for positive supply ground for negative supply and v in is the input voltage for arduino we have six analog pins from a0 to a5 and 14 digital pins from 0 to 13 now what is the difference between analog and digital the difference is when we have only two conditions when we have only two possibilities we will use digital pins like the tube light is on or off the led is on or off the sensor is sensing or not sensing it is high or low this or that when there are only two possibilities we will go for digital and when there are multiple possibilities we will go for analog like we can control the speed of our fan 
from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. When there are multiple probabilities, we will go for analog. Also, we have two prints 0 and 1 in digital. 0 is Rx and 1 is Tx. Now, Rx stands for receiver and Tx stands for transmitter. We use Rx and Tx for other wireless devices to communicate with them. Rx will receive data from the device and Tx will transmit data to the device. Now, let's start the coding part. For that, I am taking the LED. Anode is positive. I will connect this anode with any of the programmable pin from 0 to 30. As the LED is on or off, there are only two conditions. And this cathode is connected with ground. So I am connecting it to pin number 30. Pin number 13 is also called as inbuilt LED pins. Now let's start the coding part. We will turn the LED on for one second and off for one second. Let's start. Okay, you can see blocks over here. In today's lecture, we will use blocks plus text as we are starting with this robotics and coding. You can see the actual code over here which you can use in Arduino ID. And we will use blocks to create the actual code. We will set the pin number 13 because I am connecting my LED to pin number 13. We will set the pin number 13 to high which means LED will work. We will hold this command for one second. LED on, wait for one second and then we will turn the LED off. So pin number 13 will be low for one second and we will wait for one second. This actual code, we will understand this code in the next lectures. First, let's do the simulation. On for one second, off for one second, on for one second, off for one second. You can see the timings over here. Now, using the same principle, let's create a traffic light signal. Now, we will use three LEDs to make a traffic light signal. Let's see the connection first. So, we are using three LEDs, red, yellow and a green one. For changing the color, just click on the LED and you can change the color, yellow and green. Now let's start with the connection. The anode, the red is connected with 13. For, red, for the red LED, I am using a red color wire. The yellow one is connected with 12. And for yellow LED, we are using a yellow color wire. And this green one is connected with pin number 11. For the green color LED, we are using a green color wire. The cathodes are connected with ground. For ground, we are using a black color wire. So select a black color wire for all the LEDs. Now let's start with the coding part. Before starting with coding, let's understand the logic first. We are using pin number 13 for red, 12 for yellow and 11 for green. I am drawing a logic table for this. <coughs> Pin 13 for the red LED, pin 12 for the yellow LED, and pin 11 for the green LED. Now, when the red LED is on, for the first 5 seconds, I want this, what I want is only the red will be on. For next 5 seconds, only yellow will be on. And for the next 5 seconds, only green will be on. This is my logic, you can build your own logic. 
for the first 5 seconds red will be on next 5 seconds yellow will be on and next 5 seconds green will be on so for turning a led on we have to keep the point we have to keep the pin high and for turning it off we have to keep the pin to low so red is pin number 13 so 13 is high over here and 12 and 11 are low similarly yellow is 12 so 12 is high over here and red and green are off similarly green is pin number 11 so 11 is high and red and yellow are off so high low 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 high low and low low high this is my logic now let's write the same logic and let's build the circuit text blocks plus text set pin number <coughs> set pin number set pin number pin number we are using 13 12 and 11 logic is high low low and high low low i want this logic for 5 seconds so i am adding a delay of 5 seconds we will wait for 5 seconds now let me duplicate these blocks this time the logic is low high low so i'll change it to <coughs> low high and low again duplicate this this time the logic is low low high so i'll write low low and high the coding part is done now let's see the connection let's see the simulation for the first 5 seconds red led is on next 5 seconds yellow one is on and next 5 seconds only green led is on now use your own logics build your own circuit in this lectures we have covered the basics of robotics and how you can write the basic code in the next lectures we will use text formats and we will see how you can use sensors in this circuit there are no sensors we are not using any sensors we are just using a time of delay in next circuits we will use sensors and we will teach you how you can interface sensors with actuators and how you can code for them so stay tuned with us and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel and you have to record the video of your own projects and you have to share the video on a mobile phone application which is free of course we will provide the link in the description uploading your video in the application is compulsory so do download the app and after all the four lectures are over on this robotics and electronics you have to submit the final projects which you have built to us on our mail id support at the rate robocat.com also you have to upload the video of the output on our app robocart the app is live on play store and it is world's first free robotics and coding application where we will teach you about robotics coding and electronics for free don't forget to download the application it is compulsory to upload the output video on the application in order to participate if you have any queries you can contact us on support at the rate robocard.com do share this video with your friends and family and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thank you so much